With Dirk Nowitzki retiring, I wanted to make a video looking back on his career, but specifically looking at his career prior to 2011. 2011, of course, is the year he led the Mavericks to their first and only NBA title and is widely considered one of the greatest NBA title runs of all time. With that championship, he solidified his legacy as an all-time great. But 2011 was actually Dirk's 13th season in the NBA. This guy entered the league in the 90s. So what happened during the first 13 years of his career? How did he develop? When was his breakthrough moment? What ultimately led him to his victory in 2011? That's what I want to cover in today's video. Before we begin, I'd like to thank The Ridge for sponsoring this video. The Ridge Wallet was originally launched as a Kickstarter campaign in 2013, and because of the popularity of their products, they are now an official company. So what made their wallets so popular? Well, to begin with, they look nothing like traditional wallets. It's two pieces of metal plates bound together by elastic bands that is designed to fit your daily essentials, such as your credit card or ID. This particular one is actually made out of carbon fiber, which gives it a very smooth feel. It is designed to be slim and lightweight. The concept behind the Ridge Wallet is minimalist and functional. A lot of men carry a lot of useless stuff in their wallet, old receipts, gift cards you'll never use. With the Ridge Wallet, you cut it down to the stuff you actually need, your daily essentials. Modern problems require modern solutions. If you've never heard of the Ridge before, I encourage you to check out their website by clicking the link down below. Dirk Nowitzki began playing professional basketball in Germany at the age of 15. Throughout his teenage years, he was trained and coached to be an outside forward rather than an inside scoring center despite his tall height. His first trainer, Pit Stahl, said he recognized that Nowitzki had a gift for shooting. At the age of 19, Nowitzki participated in a couple of international Nike-hosted basketball events where he had the chance to play against NBA players, including guys like Charles Barkley and Scottie Pippen. In a 30-minute exhibition game, 19-year-old Nowitzki outplayed Charles Barkley, which prompted Barkley to say, The boy is a genius. If he wants to enter the NBA, he can call me. It was at these events where he caught the eye of Donnie Nelson, the son of legendary head coach Don Nelson. At the time, Don Nelson was the coach and general manager of the Dallas Mavericks, and Donnie Nelson was working with his father as the assistant general manager. He was impressed with Nowitzki's shooting and competitiveness. In the 1998 draft, the Mavericks traded down and grabbed Dirk Nowitzki with the ninth pick. In that same trade, they acquired 24-year-old Steve Nash, who wasn't getting any minutes in Phoenix, and who happened to be a good friend of Donnie Nelson. In 1998, Dallas was in the midst of an eight-year playoff drought. They were one of, if not the most unsuccessful franchise in the 90s. Nowitzki's rookie season was tough. He felt physically and mentally overmatched by NBA forwards and was a horrific defensive player. In away games, the fans noticed this poor defense and heckled him by calling him Irk Nowitzki. During home games, some fans began to turn on him as well, booing him and the Mavericks for yet another losing season. They were also in part booing him because they thought Dallas should have drafted someone else, namely the guy who was taken right after Dirk Nowitzki, the 10th pick of the 1998 draft, Paul Pierce. While Nowitzki was struggling, Paul Pierce was averaging 16 points per game as a rookie on his way to making the all-rookie first team. Unlike Nowitzki, who nobody knew about before he came to the NBA, Pierce was a McDonald's All-American in high school and played for a very famous basketball university. Pressure almost got to Dirk Nowitzki, who years later admitted he seriously considered going back to Germany. The transition to the NBA was like jumping out of an airplane, hoping the parachute would somehow open. In the offseason after Nowitzki's rookie year, Dallas underwent massive changes. Most notably, the team was sold to tech millionaire Mark Cuban, who upon purchasing the Mavericks, immediately made changes to turn the franchise around. He not only marketed the team better and made the games more enjoyable for the fans, he was also determined to make his players happier, purchasing a new airplane for them to fly in, as well as attending every single home game in person, rooting for them on the sidelines, and occasionally yelling at the refs. Well, not occasionally, very frequently yelling at the refs. Nowitzki's breakthrough came very early in his career, in his second season in the league. His confidence level shined through as he became more comfortable playing in the league. He finished the season averaging 17 points and 6 rebounds, finishing second in voting for most improved player behind Jalen Rose. The Mavericks missed the playoffs again with a 40-42 and 42 record, but 40 wins was also the best the team had done the entire decade. 
In Nowitzki's third season, the Mavericks took yet another step forward, with Steve Nash starting to develop into a top tier point guard and with the help of newly acquired players such as Juwan Howard, they made the playoffs with a 53 win season. They were matched up against the Utah Jazz led by the then very old Stockton and Malone. For many NBA fans, this was their first encounter of Nowitzki on the national stage, and Nowitzki shined, averaging 23.8 points. The Mavericks lost to the Spurs in the second round, but not without Nowitzki going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Tim Duncan, including a 42-point, 18-rebound effort in Game 4. After the 2001 playoffs, Nowitzki was on everyone's radar as a young up-and-coming star. Opposing teams began game planning for him on how to stop him, how to defend him. In the 2002 season, Nowitzki would be selected to his first All-Star appearance. Dallas won 57 games. The next year, they won 60 games. They were number one offense in the league, led by their big three of Nowitzki, Nash, and Michael Finley, playing a fast-paced, run-and-gun style. They ended up facing the San Antonio Spurs in the Western Conference Finals, but Dirk Nowitzki suffered a knee injury in Game 3 that kept him out the rest of the series and dooming the Dallas Mavericks. The following year, they continued to storm the league with their number one ranked offense, but their defense had fallen to unacceptable levels. Nowitzki and Nash were big parts of this problem. The Mavericks ended up 26th in the league in defense despite being number one in offense, a disparity that is rarely seen in the NBA. They lost to the Chris Webber Sacramento Kings in the first round, in large part because they couldn't defend anyone. In the offseason of 2004, Steve Nash left Dallas after Mark Cuban refused to match the massive six-year contract offered to him by the Phoenix Suns. In his place, Dallas brought in Jason Terry and Devin Harris, two guys who would play important roles in Dallas' success later on. Losing Steve Nash hurt Dallas' offense but strengthened their defense. The team became even more centered around Nowitzki and his skill set, which resulted in a more balanced play style. While Nash ended up winning MVP that year, Nowitzki managed to finish third in voting, right behind Shaq. The Mavericks won 58 games and met the Steve Nash Suns in the second round. In Game 6, with the Suns up 3-2, Nowitzki struggled with his shot, making only 9 of 25 field goal attempts. The game went into overtime where Nowitzki missed all 5 of his shots. Once again, Dallas was eliminated from the playoffs. In 2006, Michael Finley was waived by Dallas, and now Dallas had become synonymous with Dirk. In the second round of the playoffs, Dirk again matched up against the Spurs, who the Mavericks had yet to beat in a playoff series. In Game 7, Dirk Nowitzki tied the game with a three-pointer and sent the game to overtime, where the Mavericks eventually won. They met the Phoenix Suns in the conference finals again, and this time, the Mavericks prevailed in six games, including a monster 50-point performance by Dirk Nowitzki in Game 5. The Mavericks had made it to the NBA Finals for the first time in franchise history. Against the Miami Heat, the Mavericks took a 2-0 series lead and were poised to take a 3-0 lead, but gave away a 15-point lead in the third quarter. Game 3 was the pivotal moment, as Miami would win three straight games, maybe with the help of refs, maybe not, and the Mavericks lost in six. Nowitzki shot poorly this series, 39% from the field and 25% from three. The 2007 regular season would be Dallas's most impressive one and would be Nowitzki's first and only MVP season. He led the Mavericks to 67 wins and he became the fourth player in NBA history at that time to join the 50-40-90 club. But this also happened to be possibly the lowest point of Nowitzki's career as the Mavericks lost to the 8th seed Golden State Warriors in the first round in possibly the greatest upset in NBA history. Being defended by Steven Jackson, Nowitzki performed noticeably worse, shooting only 38% from the field all series long. This series prompted many fans and sports commentators to label Nowitzki as a choker, citing not only this embarrassing loss, but also Nowitzki's poor performance in the 2006 Finals, as well as his poor performance in the elimination game of 2005. In 2008, the Mavericks brought in Jason Kidd, but failed to recapture the magic that got them 67 wins the year before. They ended up as the seventh seed in the West and lost in the first round. After this season, Avery Johnson was fired and Rick Carlisle was hired as the new head coach. In the first two seasons with Carlisle as the head coach, the Mavericks remained playoff contenders but failed to reach the conference finals, even with Nowitzki playing as an all-star with remarkable durability. 
After the Mavericks were again knocked out by the San Antonio Spurs in the playoffs in 2010, Nowitzki became a free agent. Despite recruiting from New York and other teams, Nowitzki decided to stay in Dallas and take a pay cut of about $16 million. This pay cut allowed the Mavericks to trade for Tyson Chandler in the offseason and would turn out to be the best $16 million Nowitzki ever spent. So then we arrive at the 2010-2011 season. Dirk gets injured during the middle of the season and misses about 20 games, but is still selected as an all-star. The Mavericks end up as the third seed in the West, matched up against the sixth seed Trailblazers. This was not a matchup people expected Dallas to win. In fact, many people picked Portland to win the series, citing Dallas's playoff troubles in the past five years, as well as questionable matchups. They weren't exactly wrong. With a 2-1 lead in the series, Dallas blew a 23-point fourth quarter lead in game four, and it seemed to be the same old story. But Dallas won the next two and moved on to the second round where they faced the Lakers. Despite having played in the same conference at this point for 13 years, this was actually the first time Kobe and Dirk had faced each other in the playoffs. And as a shock to everyone, the Mavericks swept the Lakers, where Pau Gasol was simply no match for Nowitzki. In the conference finals, the Mavericks triumphed over the young Durant-led OKC team, where Nowitzki averaged 32 points per game. In the finals, they again faced the Miami Heat, but this time a very different Miami Heat. The big three led by LeBron in his first year in Miami. Despite a remarkable playoff run by Dallas, most people favored Miami in this series. Their super team was none like any other we had seen before. But the same fourth quarter issues that had plagued Dallas over the years now plagued Miami. The Heat blew a 15 point fourth quarter lead in game two and allowed Dallas to tie the series 1-1. Miami won game three, and prior to game four, Nowitzki had a fever but managed to hit the game winner, drawing comparisons to Jordan's flu game. Nowitzki, with the help of Jason Terry, Sean Marion, Tyson Chandler, JJ Barea, and many others, went on to lead the Mavericks to two more victories, winning the NBA championship. Between the years 2000 and 2011, Nowitzki led the Dallas Mavericks to the playoffs every single season, which is quite an accomplishment. And I think the reason why more people don't know that is just because the Spurs have been even better in that regard. Nowitzki's career actually has a fairly interesting arc with a lot of ups and downs. And I think it can be a good reminder for us not to write off certain playoff chokers just yet. But anyways, that is the video. Make sure to check out The Ridge for their cool stuff. And I will see you next time.